Apple announced a new M2 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro at the latest event, and they are definitely an upgrade from the previous models, but not in the same way. So let's talk about what I liked, what I'm not so sure about, and then where I thought there were some opportunities for improvements. The starting price of the M2 MacBook Air is $1,199, which is $200 more than the previous model with the M1 chip. Now that gives you eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, which I have to say that I'm not super happy about. The design has been updated though. The new MacBook Air no longer has the wedge shape and it now resembles the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro, but of course it's a lot thinner, like almost unbelievably thin. We're looking at 11.3 millimeters, which is less than half an inch, and it weighs in at 2.7 pounds or 1.24 kilograms. And when you check out that display, it's almost paper thin. It's, it's pretty impressive. Along with the new design, we're also getting new colors. So like the previous model, it's available in space gray and silver, but instead of gold, we now have starlight and midnight, which is the one I'm leaning towards. Now back to the display, this is definitely an area where we see several upgrades. So first we're moving from a 13.3 inch retina display to a larger 13.6 inch liquid retina display. And we're not getting the liquid retina XDR display that we have on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models, but we are getting a very slightly higher resolution than the M1 MacBook Air. We're moving from 2560 by 1600 to 2560 by 1644. We're also getting 500 nits max brightness versus 400 on the previous model. So this new display will be brighter. Uh, the bezels have been reduced with the M2 MacBook Air, but we do get a notch just like we do with the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. And this notch houses the new camera module, which I'll get to in a minute. In addition to being bigger, the new display is a 10-bit display with support for 1 billion colors. So photos and videos will have more accurate color reproduction. Now, as far as ports, we're getting the same two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports that we had on the previous models. And again, both of them are on the left side. And this means that we're still unable to connect accessories or to charge the laptop from both sides. Now, I really wish that this was something that Apple upgraded on the newer model because it can be inconvenient in certain situations. But what we are getting is the return of MagSafe with MagSafe 3, which means that you can now charge the M2 MacBook Air and then still keep both ports available for things like an external display with up to 6K resolution or something else like a portable SSD. The base M2 MacBook Air comes with a 30 watt power adapter. There's also an optional 35 watt compact power adapter with dual USB-C ports. So you can charge two devices at the same time. Or if you really want, you can get a 67 watt power adapter that can charge the MacBook Air to 50% in 30 minutes. I think that's great. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right side with support for high impedance headphones. The Magic Keyboard now has a full height row of function keys with a larger touch ID button. And of course, we're still getting the force touch trackpad. Now this keyboard and trackpad combo was excellent on the M1 MacBook Air and full size function keys and a larger touch ID are going to be more comfortable to use. The camera was also upgraded from 720p on the M1 MacBook Air to 1080p. And this new camera doesn't only have a higher resolution, it also has better low light performance. And in fact, it's twice as good as the previous model, which should really help with video calls in poor lighting conditions. Now, this was one of my critiques of the M1 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, so I'm glad to see that Apple upgraded it. We're also getting a new ISP or image signal processor on the M2 chip, so more advanced computational video will result in an even better overall image. Now, the speakers were upgraded to a four speaker sound system, which is pretty impressive in such a slim laptop. And it should offer superior audio quality to the previous model, which was already pretty good. We're also getting a new three mic array to capture cleaner audio. And I can't wait to let you hear the test. Now, finally, we get support for spatial audio when you're playing music or watching movies with Dolby Atmos. Apple spent a lot of time highlighting the performance of the M2 chip, which is powerful and impressively efficient. So stick with me as I go through these numbers because they can be confusing, but they are meaningful. And there's one incredibly important part. We're getting a second generation five nanometer tech chip with 20 billion transistors, which is 25% more than the M1 chip. 
but what does this actually do for you? So for starters, we're getting 100 gigabytes per second of unified memory bandwidth, which is a 50% increase over the M1 chip. And speaking of unified memories, the M1 chip had a maximum of 16 gigabytes. The M2 bumps this up to 24 gigabytes. So you'll be able to push this entry-level laptop even harder and you'll be able to accomplish things that would have taxed the M1 chip. While we're still getting an eight core CPU, the four high performance core are even more powerful and the four high efficiency cores are even more efficient. So we're seeing improvement at both ends. Now, overall, we're getting an 18% improvement in multi-core performance over the M1 chip and almost two times the performance of the latest 10 core PC laptop chip while using the same power consumption. And it can deliver the maximum level of performance of the 10 core PC chip at a quarter of the power. And Apple does reference this chip as the i7-1255U on the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 360 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. When compared with the 12 core i7 1260p and the MSI Prestige 14 Evo, the M2 chip delivers 87% of the peak performance of that chip at a quarter of the power consumption, which is pretty ridiculous if you think about it. So it's very clear that Apple is focusing on power efficient performance instead of simply reaching for the highest peak. Now, when we look at the next generation GPU and the M2, we see that it now offers up to 10 cores. There's also no seven core variant like there was with the M1 chip. In terms of performance, we're looking at a 25% increase with the same power consumption as the M1 and up to 35% higher peak performance. Now, compared with the integrated GPU and the same 10 core PC chip that we talked about, we're looking at 2.3 times the performance with the same power consumption or the same peak performance of the 10 core PC chip at a fifth of the power. Now, probably the most impressive part is that the M2 MacBook Air can achieve this level of performance without an active cooling system. So there's no fan. And just like the M1 MacBook Air, it's going to be absolutely silent. All in all, if you're just browsing the web and watching video, this isn't going to significantly improve your user experience. But if you're doing things like editing video in Final Cut Pro, then you'll be getting a 38% bump in performance. With a slightly larger 52.6 watt hour battery, we're also able to maintain the same battery life of the M1 MacBook Air with 18 hours of video playback and 15 hours of web browsing. My M1 MacBook Air really felt like it lasted all day. Like I never really worried or thought about having to charge it. So I'm super excited to get this new model in the studio and then see how it holds up. Now, when we get to the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, it looks like Apple essentially kept everything about the body the same, and then just plugged in the M2 chip. There's no eight core GPU version, only 10 cores, and it starts at $1,299 with eight gigabytes of unified memory and 256 gigabytes of RAM. When you compare it with the M1 model, there's no upgrade to the display. The keyboard still has the touch bar, which I happen to like, but I know a lot of users don't. So other than some relatively minor audio upgrades, I have to say that the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro is a bit underwhelming. Now Apple did a good job with upgrading the MacBook Air. We're getting a more powerful M2 chip, a new display, a completely new design with new colors, new charging options, an upgraded camera, improved speakers, and all of that with the same battery life. So if you are thinking of getting the M1 MacBook Air but want these new features, I would definitely wait. On the other hand, the M2 MacBook Pro seems like it was a little bit of an afterthought where the focus was primarily on the new chip, but I'm not quite sure where it fits into the current MacBook lineup. I would have also liked to see both machines start with a 512 gigabyte SSD. I think that they're both gonna be powerful enough to last you for the next five or seven years. And since they can't be upgraded, it would be hard for me to recommend going with the 256 gigabyte model. I'm super excited to get both of these in the studio and start playing with them and then share my experience with you. If you have any questions that you want me to cover in my detailed reviews and comparisons, let me know in the comment section. Now you should watch this comparison between the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.